Welcome, everybody, to this month's Speaker Circle Community Call. This is a training that I do once a month. I do a small training, about 15 minutes, and then you get the opportunity to ask me questions and get answers right away. And then we go around the room and we do a little bit of networking. And that networking is designed because speakers need to know speakers, because you are all a great source of referral for each other, especially if you find the right person who you can kind of like refer back and forth to. So this month, we are going to be talking about relationships and reputation, relationships with the people that are doing the booking, the relationships with the people who you have done speaking for. Gail, I met a couple of years ago now when she hosted a speaker event and her and I have become friends and have kept in touch and we're thinking about doing it again in 2025. But that's a relationship. You know, like I met her at an event, I became one of her speakers and you just keep that relationship going. One of the things that I hear a lot of new speakers, and when I say new, like new-ish, They've done some speaking, but they feel like it's just like it's not taking off, like it's so much work to pitch myself. Like, well, have you ever like gone back and connected with the people who have booked you? And that's usually where the light bulb is. We're constantly looking for something new, somebody else to pitch when you've got all of these people from your past whom you have already spoken for. They already know what you're like to be on the stage or on their podcast or their live stream show, and they can actually refer you, if not book you back again. A lot of times I I always encourage my clients, like when we're first starting to work together, I want you to go back and reconnect with everybody who you've ever spoken for. Just have a connection call. Get on the call, you know, like, hey, there's so much that's been going on in my world. There's so much that's going on in your world. Love to reconnect. And that's when you're going to find out, like, hey, well, like maybe they're at a new company. Maybe they're in a new position where they can actually bring you in. You just never know what's going to happen, but it's maintaining those relationships. So that's just one of the things I just thought I'd bring up right away since Gail is sitting right here. But here's a few more. So let's start off with with the relationships. Attending events with a networking mindset. Always going into like, hey, like I'm attending this conference, this networking event. It could be a chamber event. Like who you who could you meet that might be able to book you as a speaker? We just never know. But also while you're attending those events, trying to find out who is the person that put this event together? Find those event planners, the conference organizers. Find them and start to build that relationship with them. And I would say for conferences, I always feel like the event planners and conference organizers, these are your unsung heroes. It's usually like they're putting other people on the stage and they don't get anything because like they're just behind the scenes. Find them. And let them know what a wonderful job the conference was, how much you've really enjoyed it. Now, try to reach out to them and do this. Either the day, if it's, if it's a three day event, the afternoon of day two. So you don't want to be at the very end, but you don't want to be in the very beginning either. So use your judgment or just kind of keep an eye on them once you see them and see if like, are they frazzled? Are they still putting a lot of things together? Or are they very relaxed because the conference is coming to an end? And that's going to be your best time to actually reach out to them, walk over to them and just compliment them. And you're building that relationship because you never know. Stay connected with them. LinkedIn. Send them another note. You never know because they are going to start looking at your LinkedIn profile they may be, huh, or a speaker. Let me look a little bit more on their website. What do they speak on? Oh, I have a conference that I have to plan, and this topic might be perfect. I'll present this to, to the host, which leads us into number two, which is put speaker in your bio. Claim it. Let people know that you are a speaker that can be hired. Put it in your email signature. 
what topics you speak on if you'd like. But just having speaker in your bio lets people know like this is somebody who is professional. You're not just hoping at home that somebody's going to knock on your door and say like, hey, um, like, could you speak at our conference? Nobody's going to ask you that unless they know that you are actually speaking, that you want to be speaking. Friends, ask your friends. Now, this is, this is a fun one because I recently had somebody reach out to me saying, you know, hey, a friend of hers was on the list of this big conference. And she's asking me, how did that happen? How did she get booked to speak? And I said to her, I said, why don't you ask her? Because next year she might be able to make that connection with whoever does the booking. Now, I recently did this myself just last week with a friend of mine. Brenda will know who I'm talking about. It is Adam Shibley. I was talking to him about how he got to be the book speaker at a particular conference. And he told me, he said, the person who puts on the conference was in my audience and saw me speak. So he saw him do a dramatic demonstration, pulled him aside later and said, hey, I want you to come speak at my event. Well, I said to him, I was like, well, I want to speak there. He's like, I know exactly how to get you on that stage. So ask your friends if you're, if you know somebody, a friend, a colleague who is speaking at a conference that you're like, I would love to speak at that event. Ask them how they got there because they're already involved with the event committee, the conference organizers. They're going to be able to make that lovely connection. And as event planners, It's hard to find a good speaker. Remember, like some of their jobs are on the line if they if they hired somebody who wasn't qualified. But speakers know speakers. And I always offer to my event planners next year when you're planning this event, if you want some recommendations, reach out. I will share with you some of my fellow colleagues, some friends that I know, depending on what topic you need next year. And they're always so, oh my God, thank you and relieved. I love being able to help other speakers out with different events, especially when I get called back to an event. So that's another one, like ask your friends, follow up with people. You meet them at an event, link in with them, have a conversation. How can I help you? Is there any sort of collaboration that we have here? It's about just building those relationships and keeping in contact with those meeting planners with those people who can put you in front of others, meeting the other speakers. If you are speaking at an in-person conference, don't just show up for your allotted hour. Get there early. Meet some of the other speakers. Go to the networking events. Stay after your event. Become a part of the conference because people will see you. They're going to want to come up to you and speak to you, the people that were in your audience, but also the meeting planners the people hosting the event. It gives them a great opportunity just to see you in action and see that you are sticking around and huh, might need them again for a future event. I want to ask you, and you can, you know, like, you know, feel free to put your answers over in the chat, but when is the last time that you spoke with or connected with somebody who had booked you to speak previously? Has it been a while? Maybe it's time to reconnect with those people. Yeah, come up with a system. I did an episode about the daily vitamin. And there's a reason why it's called the daily vitamin because you're supposed to take it every single day. You don't take seven of them on Sunday and say, hey, I'm good for the week. Same thing. I want you to reach out to somebody like once a day. You can do, you know, if you don't feel like you have a long list, you can just do it Monday through Friday. You don't have to do it seven days a week, but just come up with a system where you're keeping in contact with people. Do some research, reach out to other people, reconnect, and also like, who else should I be speaking to? Your database will grow significantly very fast. It's like I always say, you know, the speaking world and getting booked to speak, it does snowball really fast. So let's talk a little bit about your reputation. And I always say that you should decide what kind of speaker you want to be and don't leave it to chance. This is something that I used to say when I was coaching executives and leadership. Decide what kind of leader you want to be. Instead of looking around at what the type of leaders 
that are around you, you decide. Come up with three words that are best going to describe you as a leader. And in this case, what are three words that are going to describe you as a speaker? Both like as you're on the platform, but also what's it like to work with you? And this is something that I dove into pretty deeply in episode 148 about your speaking style, but then staying true to that. You know, I like to have pre-event meetings with people, you know, one to decide whether or not that this is an opportunity that I should be speaking at. But even once I've decided, I want to touch base with people like two or three weeks before the event, just to, just to cover some bases, wondering if there's anything new that I should know about that I can add into my presentation. You have your speech and then you have like a post event. So I have a process that keeps me on track and it keeps me in front of the meeting planners building that relationship. And part of mine is that I just want them to feel like I was really easy to work with. In an in-person event, I'll tell you one of the things that I like to do. I get an emergency contact number, somebody who's going to be at the event. And as soon as I arrive, I haven't even gotten out of my car. I will send that person a text message, letting them know that I am on site. I am one thing less that the meeting planner has to worry about. It's like, is the speaker coming? Because we all know there are lots of reasons why speakers don't show up. So decide on what kind of a speaker you want to be. What's that experience for the meeting planners? And then I would also say, be on time. Show up early, be on time, stay later. People notice, especially that showing up early. I mean, sometimes even for virtual events, I will show up. I'm going to be the first person that's clicking in because... Yeah, Gail, Gail, that's exactly what Gail did. She was the first person. She showed up five minutes ahead of time. I'm one of those people too. I want my name to show up for the meeting planner for whoever's hosting the event to know like, Lorian's already here. Because I want my meeting planner to feel safe throughout the entire process of working together. Again, it's not a just show up, speak, and then leave. So there you have it. That's about building relationships and improving your, your reputation. What questions do you have? This is the Q&A portion. So feel free just to unmute. Go ahead, Gail. Okay, so I kind of have a statement first. So I've, I'm also on stage. So yes, I created and will create spaces. And I've been asked to present to people who have been on stage with me because they like my energy or what it is that I presented. So, you know, the people that you're co-presenting with, go to lunch with them, have coffee with them, get to know them. And another is someone that I am actually co-producing a leadership course with because he loved my Crafting the Flow Formula training. And he has a resilience training and he thinks there's great synergy there. So there's another thing that that happened. So what are some of your recommendations for honing in on the right person to kind of connect with while you're at an event and meeting new presenters? Well, I think if you do your homework and look at the, the agenda for the conference, for the event, who are the speakers so that you can do a little bit of your homework to decide, you know, based on your background, on their background, is there a synergy? Is there some sort of collaboration that you might see something that overlaps? That's the first thing that comes to mind. The second thing is you just never know who somebody can connect you with. So they may seem like an unlikely person, but it's who else do they know that they can refer you to? So I'm going to say, trust your instincts. But that was a great question. Thank you. And thank you for that story. Congratulations. Who else has a question? Go ahead, Adam. It's not a question, but I wanted to let you know that I just went into my booking form and added an emergency name, emergency cell phone, emergency email, secondary contact. What if the original one that I had isn't there? As soon as you said it. 
got to yes. have a second person. You know, and if you have a speaker agreement, put that on your speaker agreement. You know, whoever is going to be present, because sometimes the person who hires us is not the person who's going to actually be in the room, whether it's a virtual event, whether it's an in-person event. I just always ask people, I need a cell phone number of somebody who's going to be there just in case. I said, I promise not to send you text messages and spam you. I said, it's just for emergency use only. Because once I did get stuck in traffic and I was the one who was panicking, I still got there in time. Who, has, who else has a question? Okay, I have one. So I have an, another. So I'm, I'm doing a lot of collaboration, by the way. <laughs> and another friend, her and I are doing a training or an event on permission, giving yourself permission. And we're looking for the right venue for this. And I, we want something unique. So I'm looking at maybe wineries or art galleries. What are some of your suggestions for unique places to hold these kind of meetings? Well, I love museums. I mean, I've done some and I've spoken at the one that's in Manchester because most people don't know that they actually have a beautiful um, presentation room. It's not huge. But unless you've spoken there, you probably wouldn't even know that it was there. Museums are fantastic. The acoustics aren't great in a museum because it's just so big. Except this did have like a nice little studio. It can be a little distracting. So I think keeping those things in mind, I'm trying to think of like, like, are you talking about something locally here in New England? In New England, we want someplace in like middle Massachusetts, she's in Connecticut and I'm in New Hampshire. So we want a place that is central for both of us and not too far from Boston. Got it. I'd love to go down to Rhode Island, but. (laughs) But what? Too far from the the, the Yeah, too too far, I think. Um, But the mansions would be fun. Okay. I... Yeah, and getting to the mansions is 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 a is a task. I will connect you with my sister. My sister has done a lot of event planning for the company that she works for. She's not in that position anymore, but she will have some great ideas to share with you. So I will I'll, I'll introduce the two of you. Okay, and I'll pick her brain for us too. Yeah, yeah, perfect, Brenda. Oh, there we go. Okay. So my question was, do you, do you use a CRM or how do you, how do you track these people? I am, well, I, in my CRM, in my database for that, where I've got like everybody's email addresses and everything, I will just tag people as like event planners. So it's not necessarily somebody that I'm emailing like my weekly email to, unless they've signed up for something. But it might be, you know, like I, I just label it like I've spoken to the, I've spoken for them or there's somebody that I met. So I make like different lists. So then I can just like, oh, I haven't spoken to this person in a while. Let me shoot them an email or let me go over and shoot them a message over in LinkedIn. Yeah. OK. Viola so has that- a question. She doesn't have her mic on. Oh, thank you. <laughs> OK. If I'm just starting... One piece of advice that you would share after you have decided what you would like to speak about, you know, what should come next. Same thing. I want you to start building those, re- those relationships with other people. So just connect with people and let people know, hey, this is something that I'm doing now. I'm speaking on this particular topic. Find out what's going on in their world. They, you get to share what's going on in your world. And then who do you know that I should talk to? So you're just building relationships and you are just getting the word out there because you never know somebody that you've spoken to might know somebody like a month later and they're like, you know, like we're, we're putting together a conference and these are some of the, some of the events that we're going to be hosting. And they might be like, I know exactly who you should, who you should reach out to. You just never know. Adam, did you have a question? That's how you raise your hand. Uh, it wasn't a question. Sorry, I was looking off to the side. Uh, a lot of colleges, prep schools, universities have great auditoriums with that are beautiful design. Oftentimes they're new, especially if you're looking at prep schools. Here in Providence, in Rhode Island, if you want to come down, uh, Ed Moses Brown, they have an amazing theater. The acoustics are out of this world. Um, so I was just putting together a list that I was going to drop in the chat. I know mm-hmm. Dean College... 
down near the, just off 495, they do a speaker series um, in sort of like just a big student center, but it's really well attended uh, and they make a big deal out of it. So I'll throw some URLs in the, in the chat. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to find something, Gail, like th think of the acoustics. Yeah, that, that I was thinking of acoustics and and comfort level. You know, one of the things that when I was a business coach, which I don't do anymore, but I will if you twist my arm. But one of the things that I used to tell my clients that were switching, especially if they were switching careers, going into a different path, if you will, is to do what I call a quest. And that is, you know, one person, find one person that you know, that, and then go out and have coffee with them. And don't ask them for anything. You ask them about their business. You, you ask pointed questions for them to give you information like a reporter. Let them know what you're doing, but don't ask for it. Do you know anyone? But at the end, you can say, I'm expanding my relationships and would love to know more people like you. Can you introduce me to two people? And they will because you didn't ask for anything. Yeah. And that's how you get to expand and really know where you fit. Yeah. Love that. Thank you so much. Well, we are at the point where if there's no more questions, so I am going to put in the chat just to give you an idea of how to introduce yourself, because remember, this is going to be a podcast. And if you can do that in less than 60 seconds or less, tell us your name, what you do and who you serve and your speaking topics. And then where can people find you, follow you to learn more information about you? Keeping in mind, of course, you guys, since you're here for this community call, you can feel free to share that information also over in the chat, but say it in a way that people who are listening to this audio will be able to follow you afterwards. So Gail, would you kick us off? Sure. Well, hi, everybody. I'm Gail Kraft, K-R-A-F-T, like the cheese, macaroni and cheese, not any relationship. And so what am I? I have become something really unique. But as a speaker, I basically speak on two things. One is definitely leadership, and it's to teach leaders how to get into flow, how to let go of control and allow their teams to take the lead without having a heart attack about it. Right. So it's how to have fun and how to get into flow. And I have a book called Crafting the Flow Formula, which is what I talk about. And the other is personal development to the next level. So I have a process called the next level living because it's going beyond what typical coaches teach. Mm -hmm. It's going into, it's for the people who are beyond that level and they're looking for more. You can reach me on LinkedIn. I love that. I love that. Adam, would you go second, please? Hi, I'm Adam Oland. I run a branding marketing agency and I speak on the power of storytelling to help people achieve their goals in sales, marketing, HR, recruiting, and culture management. People can find me at russellandspark.com. That's Russell like the sound, R-U-S-T-L-E-A-N-D-S-P-A-R-K, Spark. Com. Nice. Thank you very much. Samantha. Hi. Thanks for having me. So let's see. Uh, my name is Samantha Irwin. Best place to find and hook up, connect is LinkedIn. Samantha Irwin, spelled with an I, I R W I N, not like Steve Irwin, the crocodile guy. And leaders in conference organizers in hospitality and retail hire me to speak about the power of people. So frontline customer service staff, creating a culture, your customer journey, and curating that customer experience, all are things that I just adore speaking about and teaching people how they make a great impact, a positive, great impact. I love that. I'm sure that you must have a beautiful speaking process. This is well, <laughs> I hope so. If you're anything the eye of beholder. No, I, yes, I hope so. <laughs> Good. Thank you very much. Thank were you, were you yeah. done? I'm sorry, I didn't mean yeah, to yeah. there. Okay. Thanks for the opportunity. Well, thank and sharing you. Thank all of your you. and sharing all of your great tips. Oh, thank you. Dennis. 
Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Introduce okay. yourself. Okay. Uh, my name is Dennis Claus. I'm Native American. My real name is Satakaloli. It's Mohawk. Mm. It means he speaks to the people. Mm. We get our names when we're children. We don't always know what they're going to be, but you get your name. I speak on storytelling. I was a storyteller for at least 20 years. I did shows and events all over the country. And in 2020, I had all my shows stop and I had to restart all over again. And I just wanted to do speaking. So I'm getting back into this. Only way you can reach me right now is DennisClaus at gmail.com. That's D-E-N-N-I-S-C-L-A-U-S-E. Clause like last sentence in a paragraph in a contract. Loophole, a technicality. Uh, it's best way to get a hold of me. And thanks for having me. Thank you very much. Thank you. And Ray, would you introduce yourself? Good afternoon. Hi, I'm Ray Cuddle. I'm an author of What Bad We Do. And right now I speak about pornography. I, I figured out as I've been watching it grow, it's grown. It's, like, you know, it's an epidemic, okay, right now. And what I, what I, through all the speeches I saw and all the different ways of helping people with it, Nobody talks about the kids. As we get into, as we get into it, we go down a hole and down, the kids are down there. And that's what's causing the shame. All right. And, but it's causing the lives, destroying the lives of these children. And we should never, ever be doing this. How can we have millions of people watching these videos? And, you know, we think it's nothing. Oh, yeah. We're our eight year old girls. Have, so, Ray, don't I, you have a you have a book, don't you? What bad we do? Yes. What bad, yeah, that's what I thought. You have a book also. Yeah. Wonderful. So, so it's 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 a hard it's a hard undertaking, but everything is coming together over the last couple of weeks. Good. Thank you. I'm glad to. Where can people find you? Uh let's see. Ray Como writing at gmail dot com, and also my website is Our Souls Direction. Com. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all being here and you will get an email so that you can sign up for next month's Speaker Circle community call. And I hope to see all of you there. And of course, the speaking topic, hmm, I don't know. It depends on what comes up or what questions I keep hearing for the next month. But thank you very much for, for joining me. I really appreciate it. And I I don't take it lightly that you trusted me with, uh, you know, five o'clock Eastern on election day. <laughs> <laughs>